Today we are going to discuss about uh, an overview of 802.3.11 network. So, here it's very basic things. It's nothing but the outlines are like this. Now, first of all, we will discuss what you mean by wireless network, then why wireless came into picture. And the third topic is uh, what is the key resource for that? That is the radio spectrum. And the fourth one is uh, ISM bands. Then, what makes the wireless networks different from other stuffs? Then, coming to the next part, overview of uh, 802.11 networks. Five components: 802.11 nomenclature and design. Then next is types of networks, coverage areas, network services, mobility support. Okay, let's start our discussion. So, and the first slide is uh, introduction to wireless network. So, as we can see uh, over the past few years, so everything has become increasingly mobile. mobile. So as a result, what happens? The traditional ways of networking, the world has been proven inadequate to meet the challenges uh, posed by our new lifestyle. So, you know, to avoid that one, we came up with a concept called mobility. So, in the traditional way, what happens? Users must be connected to a network by physical cables. That is must. Otherwise, we can't transfer data from one thing to another. As they are connected to a physical cable, uh, their movement is dramatically reduced. That is the main constant for that. So, as we came across to wireless connectivity part, however, poses no such restriction and allows a great deal of more free movement on the parts of network users. So that is the main advantage of uh, wireless connectivity. Okay. So the reason wireless telephony got successful because it enables people to connect with each other regardless of their respective location. Wherever you are there, you can connect to each other. Okay. Next slide is why wireless. So the first thing is a mobile telephone user can drive miles when he is on a single conversation because the phone connects the user through cell towers. So there will be no drop of the calls. Ideally it should not happen. Then the similar way, we came up with that kind of concept for the data networks. So in the wireless data networks, what happens? Uh, we can do in a conference room, uh, we can go to a library, we can go, uh, go to a coffee house, uh, anything. We can go to a parking slot, anywhere. But there should not be any breaking data network. So, as we can see, the most successful wireless networking technology as of now is 802.1. The most obvious advantage of wireless network technology is mobility. That is the utmost point the people want to move to mobility. The second most point is Wireless network users can connect to the existing networks. Okay. And they can free freely roam here and there. So if you see here, this wireless network is typically have a great deal of flexibility. Wireless devices are constrained to operate in a certain frequency band. 
జరిగింది సిమిలర్గా నెట్వర్క్స్ ట్రాన్స్మిట్ డేటా ఇన్ ద సిమిలర్ వే వైర్లెస్ నెట్వర్క్స్ ట్రాన్స్మిట్ డేటా ఓవర్ ఎ నెట్వర్క్ మీడియం ఓకే దట్ మీడియం ఈజ్ నథింగ్ బట్ ద ఎలక్ట్రో మ్యాగ్నెటిక్ రేడియేషన్ ఓకే గుడ్ ఇన్ ఆర్లీ వైర్లెస్ నెట్వర్క్స్ యూజ్డ్ యాజ్ ఇన్ఫ్రెట్ లైట్ హౌవర్ ఇన్ఫ్రెట్ లైట్ హ్యాస్ లిమిటేషన్స్ there are many more limitations for the infrared light so limitations you can say like uh, if i'm transmitting the light and if some wall come comes in between if some partition comes in between then gone case yes. it will not work radio waves can penetrate most of the office substructures and offer a wider coverage reach this is the advantage okay. then the key resource so as we can see here the key resource is the radio spectrum so what is radio spectrum here this wireless devices are constrained to operate in a certain frequency band okay it has to work on that frequency band. each band has an associated band okay bandwidth which is simply the amount of frequency space in the band so in a normal world i can say that suppose there is a road only one car can go and only one car can go. so at present that is the band if i want to increase the bandwidth of that road i can do i can double the road so that what will happen at a time two cars can go two cars can come that's what the bandwidth is called in a layman language okay so bandwidth is nothing but is the measure of the data capacity of a network okay well so if you will lower the bandwidth lower the bandwidth are used to transmit the less information whereas higher bandwidth we can transmit more information radio spectrum always is religiously controlled by regulated authorities through licensing process so we have to take a license and for that we will go ahead the is ISM is nothing but uh, you know this is abbreviation for industrial scientific and medical so basically this ISM bands are used in the industrial scientific process and medical equipment process so the, the most familiar ISM band device is the microwave oven cordless phones which we normally use in our day to day life household stuffs so that works on a 2.4 gigahertz ism band okay. so this ism bands generally allow license free operation then we will see what makes this wireless networks different okay. this wireless networks are an excellent complement to fixed networks just as mobile telephones complement fixed land telephones see in the early days what we were doing we were using fixed lines there will be a landline if some somebody calls up the bell will ring and we have to go to the phone and we have to pick, pick up the call and it will be in a short place in our homes okay. but in order to overcome that wireless networks came in the picture wherever you want whenever you want you can go here and there 
That's a very good advantage, right? Okay. So basically, there are two major advantages of wireless networks. Uh, the first one, you can say, the lack of physically bound physical boundary in the dynamic physical medium. So, what, what do you mean by lack of physical boundary? There is no restriction at all. You can go wherever you want. You can roam here and there. And dynamic physical medium, you can say, so both are both are kind of similar stuff. So dynamically, you can roam here and there. There is no access. There is no restriction at all. So these wireless networks are strongly authenticated to prevent use to prevent use by unauthorized users and unauthorized connections. Okay? Now, coming to the overview, overview of H2.11 networks. This H2.11, this is a member of IEEE H025. Okay? This is an organizing body, IEEE. So, this IEEE H025 family is nothing but a nothing but a series of specifications of local area networks that is LAN technology. Okay. So this IEEE A02 specifications they are mainly focusing upon the two lowest layer of the OSI model because they incorporate because they incorporate both physical and data link components. You guys will be knowing there are seven layers in your OSI seven layer architecture. First one is if I will go from the application side, application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer and the final one is physical. So normally, when we are counting the layer 1, layer, layer 1 is nothing but a physical layer. Physical. Layer 2 is data link layer. Like that, when we will go up, it will go up to layer 7 that is application layer. Okay. So basically, this IEEE A02 specifications they are focused upon layer 1 and layer 2 that is physical layer and data link layer. So here there are two parts. The first part is the MAC layer. MAC. Okay. So in the data link layer, data link layer, this MAC, MAC things will come. MAC is nothing but media access control. These are nothing but a set of rules to determine how to access the medium and send data. That is the main purpose. And the details of transmissions and reception let the five in. That is the layer one. Okay. Here you can see, like uh, this is the 802.802 specification comes. This all is data link layer. This is physical. Data link layer is again subdivided into two parts. The upper one is known, known as LNC that is logical link control and the lower one is known as MAC subway media access control okay. then the physical layer five components so here as we can see 
this is the fiber that is the layer one this fiber layer consists of two centric pm components okay the upper one is known as plcp that is nothing but physical layer convergence procedure and the lower one is known as physical medium dependent pmd so this plcp is responsible to map the mag frames onto the medium from mag frame onto the medium and pmt pmd so pmd to transmit those frames that the basic two parts then coming to 802.11 nomenclature and design this 802.11 networks consists of four major physical components the first one is station here you can see from the diagram The second one is access point. This is the one, access point. Then the wireless medium. This is the wireless medium. And the fourth one is distribution system. So in short, we can say that station is we can write as STA, access point as AP. distribution system as ds sometimes wireless medium we we can write as wm so these are the four components then the nomenclature and design so what what do you mean by station so station is nothing but a computing device with wireless network interfaces so these networks are built to transport data between stations access point so here the frames on an 802.11 network must be converted to another type of frame for delivery to the rest of the world when a station will send data that data is a frame of 802.11 it has to be converted to a different format and that is the responsibility of an ap devices called access points that performs the wireless to wide bridging function that's what i told so when a wireless data will come from a station it has to go through ap to the rest of the world so this ap is acting like a bridge okay. wireless medium so to move frames from from one station to another station the standard use the wireless medium see i want to go from place a to the place b i may use a cycle a car a bus or an aeroplane they are the way, uh, ways of medium to communicate from point a to point b in the similar way these frames are using wireless medium distribution system that is ds what happens when there are several access points are connected to form a large coverage area they must communicate with each other to track the movements of mobile stations okay suppose there are five access points ap1 2 3 4 5 all has to be connected to the same backend that is nothing but the distribution system so this is nothing the logical component of 802.11 which is used to forward frames to the destination 
then the types of networks. So if you will see the basic building block, though in a in a small scale, if you look at that, that is nothing but BSS, basic service set, which is simply a group of stations that communicate with each other. That is that is what called BSS. Communications takes place within that area called the basic service area. So basic service set is nothing but a group of stations that communicate with each other and that communication takes place within that area is called basic service area. So if a station is in the basic service area, it can communicate with other members of the BSS. So basically BSS are of two types independent BSS, infrastructure BSS. What is independent? What is infrastructure? So in the independent BSS, uh, we can call it as IBSS also. So this independent BSS, that is IBSS, they can communicate directly with each other and thus be within directly direct communication range. Says if two stations are there, they have to communicate with each other directly. There is no need of the third. In the smallest possible 802.11 network is an IBSS with two stations. There is the smallest one we can make. This IBSS sometimes we call them as ad hoc network. infrastructure network. Here the basic difference is we can use an AP to communicate with two stations. See here you go this is an IBSS. This station has to connect with this station directly. This has to connect with this one directly. There is no third party. But in the infrastructure, what will happen? If station 1 wants to connect with station 2, it has to go through access point only. So, here two things will happen. First, the originating mobile station transfers the frame to the access point. Suppose this is the transmitting station and this is the receiving station. So, first what will happen? Station 1 has to send the data to access point then access point has to send the data to station 2. In this way, communication can happen properly. Then coming to coverage areas. So these coverage areas are broadly classified into two types. One is basic service area which we already went through. And the next one is extended service area. This basic service set can cover, cover in a very small office and homes, okay? But if you want to increase that area, what we will do? We have to link more than one BSS to each other. And that, that's what we call it as extended service set. ESS in short. So, an ESS can be created by chaining BSS together with a backbone network. There has to be backbone network. All the access points in an ESS are given the same SSID. SSID is nothing but a network name. Okay, SSID stands for Service Set Identifier. See, in order to recognize you, I have to call you by a particular name, the name whatever you have in the same way. To detect a network, we have to call it by a name. That name is nothing but 
SSID service set identifier. So as per the 802.11 technology, there is no particular backbone technology. But normally we use Ethernet as backbone. So this is the coverage area. See, this is a single BSS which is connected. AP2, BSS1 connected to AP1. So all the APs are connected to a single distribution system. This is nothing but distribution system. So this BSS1, 2, 3, 4, to all we call it as extended service set. This DSS, DS distribution system is connected to router than internet. Network services. So, so how we can define a network technology? We have to define the services it offers. So, H2 2.11 provides many kind of services so some of them we are using for moving data some of them we need for management operations to allow the network to keep track of the mobile needs deliver frames etc so basically if you will see the services the services are included distribution integration association reassociation Disassociation, authentication, deauthentication, confidentiality, MSGU delivery, transmit power control, dynamic frequency selection, etc. Let's go one level. What do you mean by distribution? So, here what happens? Every access point has to be connected. Distribution system. So, this service is used by the mobile stations in an infrastructure network basis. Okay. And the main responsibility of this one is with the frames has been accepted by an access point, distribution services are used to deliver the frame to the destination integration so this is basically service provided by the distribution system this allows a connection of the distribution system to a non ieee age 2.1 network this is the main functions of integration association association means When the delivery of frames is possible from a mobile station, it has to associate and it has to register. Then only the association will take place. Just this is a briefing. Don't go in depth of that. We will discuss further in my upcoming slides. Then by using this registration information, it will determine which access point to use for any mobile station. station okay? Any association. What happens when a mobile station moves within a basic service area or within a single extended service area? It has to evaluate the signal strength and it will switch the access wherever it finds the good signal. So basically this reassociation requests are associated by the mobile stations. When signal conditions indicate that a different association would be beneficial. That is very much important. Okay? Going further, we will discuss more about it. This reassociation requests are never initiated by an access point. Disassociation. Disassociation is nothing but to terminate an existing association. Stations will use the disassociation service. 
authentication authentication is nothing but see physical security is a major component of a wide land security solution wireless networks cannot offer the same level of physical security the way we are doing in the ethernet the authentication we can't do it in wireless net so in order to avoid that situation what we have to do we have to we have to depend on additional authentication routines to ensure that users accessing the network are authorized to do that so this authentication is a necessary prerequisite to the association process because only authenticated users are authorized to use the network well what is deauthentication this is the just opposite of authentication deauthentication of deauthentication dominates an authenticated relationship okay? confidentiality this provides a protection against apps dropping or spying msdu delivery msdu msdu stands for max service data unit this is nothing but at this point of time you just understand that this is nothing but a frame okay which is responsible for getting the data to the actual endpoint these are the main responsibility of that main destination point okay transmit power control see whenever transmitting happens there will be some interference so using this feature we can reduce the interference interference by minimizing the station's transmit power okay. the dynamic frequency selection dynamic frequency selection what happens this is a added feature what happens here in some of the radio systems radio systems they are operate in the 5 gigahertz range so basically you can say this wireless networks are divided into two categories broadly 2.4 gigahertz and and this 5 gigahertz range so normally this radio systems operate on 5 gigahertz range as a result what happens some regulatory authorities have mandated that wireless lans must detect radio systems and move to frequencies that are not in use by the radar so this is the main purpose of dfs that is nothing but dynamic frequency selection so as a result of this it avoids interfering with the radar operation in the 5 gigahertz then the mobility support mobility support what this is a feature when user moves from one place to the this is the main motivation factor we came for the 802.1 wireless things so mobility is the usual the primary motivation motivation for deploying an 802.1 net when we are transmitting the data frames while the station is moving will do for the data communications what mobile telephony did for voice the way we did for mobile telephone in the same way we implement this feature for data communications okay so as far as this 802.11 is concerned basically there are three types of transitions first of all is there is no transition then bss transition then ess transition okay. no transition if the station is within the same access point service area obviously there is no transition is going to happen suppose i am at my home and i am using my home access point i connected to my home area i am roaming here and there within the home so there is, there will be no transition happens okay so this state occurs when because the station is not moving or it is moving within the basic service area of its current access point 
then PA suspension. Stations continuously monitor the signal strength and quality from all access points administratively assigned to cover an extended service area. As we discussed before, in the extended service area what happens? There are more than one BSS. In one BSS, there are more than one access points will be there. So when a station moves from one BSS to the other BSS, it will see the signal quality, the strength of and quality from all access points. Okay? Then it will switch from one access point and the access point when it will find the other one is better in comparison with the current. So in an extended service area, this 802.11 provides may layer mobility. We came across two layers, make layer and file layer. So here make layer mobility happens. Stations attached to the distribution system will send, send out frames addressed to the MAC address of a mobile station and let the access points handle the final hop to the mobile station. Okay. This distribution system stations do not need to be aware of a mobile station's location as long as it within the same as the service area. Here uh, we are illustrating a figure. What happens at the time T1? T1 station was in BSS1 of ESS1. At time 2, it moved from BSS1 to the BSS2. Okay. Then the mobile station used the reassociation service to associate. Initially, station will associate with IP1. When it will move from BSS1 to BSS2, it has to be associated with IP2. That is the mobility support. Okay. ESS transition. ESS transition refers from one ESS to distinctly different ESS. As of now, A02.1 does not support this kind of ESS transition. Okay. So here, as you can see, this, this is the first ESS, that is ESS1, under which BSS1 and BSS2 comes. When station, will, station wants to move from ESS1 area to the ESS2 area, it has to terminate the process and it has to be associated. Again, the association will happen fresh. Seamless transition is not possible here. This is not supported. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching this video. If it is helpful for you, somehow, please like it, subscribe it, don't forget to comment it, and kindly share with your friends. Thanks a lot.